everybody. My name is Anthony Allen. I am the clinical support specialist at JPNO and a licensed physical therapist. Today I'm here to tell you about our Laser Posture 3D apparatus. The Laser Posture is a device that we use to help optimize our patient alignment. So I'm going to kind of walk you through that process and show you what that looks like and then tells you what this means for you as the patient. When I speak to prosthetic alignment, I'm referring to the biomechanics of the individual. So is the pieces of that prosthesis aligned so that the individual has the forces distributed over them in the best possible manner. And so when we do this, there's three parts to it. We first have a bench alignment where we set the prosthesis by the manufacturer specifications. We have a static alignment where you have the patient standing and you align the prosthesis properly. And then you have a dynamic alignment where the patient actually walks and we look at what the prosthesis is doing once it's in action. And so the laser posture is designed to help us with our static alignment. It shows us how the prosthesis is pushing on the patient while the patient is standing still. And then we can take that and develop it into the rest of our process. There are four parts to the Lazar posture. The first is a platform or force plate that we will ask the patient to stand upon. The second is a set of cameras. One will be placed in front of the patient and the other to the side. The third is a central processing computer that will collect the information from the platform and cameras. The computer will then use this information to create and transmit an image to a tablet. The tablet is where the practitioner can view the images of the Lazar posture and then interpret the adjustments that are being recommended. Here we can see how a patient is placed in order to utilize the Lazar posture. We ask a patient to step onto the platform and place the toes of each limb on the same line. They will then stand up straight in a relaxed position and let the arms rest by the side. They will look straight ahead and try to place equal weight on each limb. For patients who cannot stand unsupported, we utilize a walker for assistance. We will now look at some different images from real-world application and discuss what is being shown. In our first example, this is what would be considered ideal static alignment from a frontal view based on the recommendations of the Lazar posture. You will notice a green and blue line. Each line represents one of the patient's limbs. These lines show us how the patient is pushing into the platform. From this view, there are a few things we are looking for. We want to see if the prosthetic foot is flat on the floor. If the patient has more weight on the inside or outside of their prosthetic foot, the corresponding line will originate from the side that is more heavily loaded. The practitioner can then make an adjustment so that we achieve a flat, evenly loaded foot. In this view, we are also looking to see where the line falls in relation to the knee of the prosthetic side. Ideally, the line will run through the middle or roughly the middle of the knee as shown here. Based on how the line falls in relation to the knee tells the practitioner that the prosthetic foot or prosthetic foot and knee needs to either be brought under the patient or out from under the patient. The last thing one wants to know in this view is what the lines are doing as they continue towards the trunk of the individual. The lines should draw closer to one another as we approach the patient's center of mass, as noted here, but they should not cross one, one another. Now let us look at a few examples of images that indicate an adjustment is necessary. In this patient's image, you will notice that the prosthetic line originates from the meteor inside portion of the prosthetic foot and then continues to run through the knee as is appropriate. This image suggests that the outside of the foot or lateral portion of the foot needs to be brought down so the foot is flat on the floor and evenly loaded. If left uncorrected, the patient will likely feel as though the prosthesis falls outward or away from them as they are walking. This feeling of instability could hinder their confidence in their balance and would ultimately hinder their level of function. Here is a similar image of another patient from the same view. However, now we can see that the line does not begin in the middle of the foot and it does not continue through the middle of the knee. This indicates that we need to make an adjustment not only to the foot so that it is flat upon the floor, but also where the foot attaches to the patient's socket to bring it further out from underneath them. Once we make our adjustments, we can compare the before and after images, and this allows us to objectively note if we have made the proper adjustment and how much more adjusted is needed. Now let's look at a patient from a side view. Here we can see what would be considered ideal static alignment from the sagittal or side view based on the recommendations of the Lazar posture. The line of the patient's prosthetic and sound side should be parallel and ideally overlapping. The line should originate from the same point within each of the feet and then continue together for their entire length. If they do not originate at the same point, this would be an indication that the prosthetic foot may need to have the toe brought up or down. If the lines begin at the same position in the feet but then diverge as they run towards the head, this would be an indication that the socket is not appropriately tilted. The socket may need to be flexed or extended to accommodate the patient's anatomy. There is a third example in which the lines are parallel but not overlapping and we will discuss this later. Let us look at some examples. 
In this image, you can see that the lines originate from different points within the sound and prosthetic foot and then come closer together as we approach the head. This image shows us that the patient's weight is all on the prosthetic toe and it is not being equally loaded throughout the whole length of the foot. This is an extreme case for demonstration purposes and you can see that the heel is not even touching the ground. A patient left in this alignment would have difficulty clearing their toe as they swing the prosthetic leg forward or even difficulty just rolling over from heel to toe in general. We should first bring the foot to a position in which it is flat on the floor and then reevaluate the tilt of the socket. Here you can see that the lines originate from roughly the same point as the foot, but then they diverge as we run towards the head into different directions. This tells us that we should look at the flexion or extension of the socket. If the patient were left in this alignment, it would cause the knee to be less stable and it would have a tendency to bend involuntarily on the patient. This last image is an example of the third example that I mentioned in which the lines are parallel but not overlapping. The lines are parallel, meaning that the prosthesis is not pushing the patient forward or backward, but we may need to look at the alignment of our components to see if we have the proper placement either anteriorly or posteriorly. At JPMO, we strive to connect people with technology so that they can reach their highest functional capabilities. By incorporating the laser posture, we'll be able to more efficiently align our prostheses so that we help set the patient up for the best possible chance for success.